Fellow NBA fans, I want to start this video off a little different, with a little game. Can you spot the difference between these two clips? Harden is open, and he fires. Not good spacing by the Magic. Now Harden's in a hurry. Harden to the basket, Harden for two. Making threes. Orlando's doing that tonight. Missed his last four there shots. Good D by Hero getting the deflection and the steal and the layup to make it an eight point lead. Harden pulls the trigger. In and out. Rebound all the defo. They can't answer with a three, but Hero oh with the putback. Coming into this postseason, Vincent and If you still haven't guessed it, don't worry. Embiid can tell you himself. You know, since uh, we got him, everybody expected uh, the Houston James Harden, uh, but that's not who he is anymore. Harden is simply not performing the same way he did before. But why is this? What changed between Houston, Brooklyn, and Philly? Most people would point the finger to the new foul rules, but I have a few more reasons I want to dive into. It's no secret that the rules would affect James Harden. James Harden is so well known for jawing fouls that with the eye test, we can see defenders would leave him open or put their hands behind their back. Now I know some Harden fans are gonna call me a hater for calling Harden a flopper with the eye test. So let's show the hard facts. James Harden has almost 100 more made free throws than made field goals in his career. And despite being known as the three point king, even a few years ago being rivaled with Steph Curry, James Harden has attempted a thousand more free throws than threes in his career, and has made three times as many free throws than shots beyond the arc, making him third in all-time three-pointers and ninth in free throws. On the free throw ladder, there's only two players in the top 10 that are still playing, James Harden and LeBron James. If we compare Harden's previous seasons, it speaks for itself. His stats have taken a significant hit, with his free throw attempts dropping a whole 4.5, leading to his points per game dropping a whole 12, with his points per game being the lowest it's been since his third season in the league, when he was scoring only 16.8 in OKC. But Harden's problem is much bigger than just free throws. Embiid said it himself. Harden isn't the same, and it's as simple as that. If we look at stats besides free throws, every single stat for Harden has dropped. Back in the day, Harden was so great and spectacular, he was dropping 40, 50, and even 60 points on the daily. The same thing we praise players like Giannis, KD, and Curry for now, saying they're the best scorers this season. Harden was even being compared to Kobe, and yes, even Michael Jordan himself. He was that good. Except now, Harden barely comes out to play and is the second option on the team behind a center and was the third option on his previous team. James Harden was putting up these numbers four years ago. Now four years ago may not seem like a lot, but think of it this way. I was a sophomore in high school the last time Harden won an MVP. Now, I'm writing these videos as a junior in college. Everyone is trying to find the solution to James Harden without addressing the real problem. James Harden, like all players have and will, has aged. We got to witness the greatness that was James Harden's prime, but it is time we come to terms with the fact those years are behind us. James Harden, like a lot of players now, have more years of basketball behind them than in front of them. And sadly, there's no solution to that. With all that information, people are obviously questioning whether to give Harden the max. Here's my take. No. Now I won't beat the same dead horse as everybody else going into his atrocious playoff stats and reputation, but rather, something else. Now Patrick Beverly made the point that if we remove the name from the story and just focus on the stats, these stats have been signed to maxes in the past. 22.5 points a game, 10.2 assists a game, eight rebounds a game, that's super max. Uh, you don't even have to put a name behind it. That's super max. LeBron did it, super max. Luka did it, super max. 
Steph did it Supermax. James Harden do it Supermax, regardless of the age right now. But come on, Bev. Using LeBron James as your reference point? As much hate as I give LeBron simply because I'm a Spurs fan, it's fucking LeBron Longevity James. So okay, let's take his own advice. Let's remove the names and you tell me who you would rather sign to a Supermax. As discussed before, not all players have the same longevity, which we're seeing now in Harden, as well as a few other players this year, like CP3. This doesn't even go into the other great point that Stephen A also made. If the 76ers give Harden the Supermax, they are taking on an incredible risk and liability. Not just in his playing ability, but also in his commitment. You forced your way out of Houston. You forced your way out of Brooklyn. You get to Philadelphia and you don't show us who you are, who you have been. You can't invest, uh, you know, uh, what is it, uh, over 225 extra million dollars on top of the 47 million dollars he's going to get for next season if he opts in. You can't invest that in a player who's either shown slippage or shown an unwillingness to step up and embrace the fact that there's a responsibility that comes along with that amount of money. As Stephen A put it, he forced his way out of Houston, then forced his way out of Brooklyn just a year later. If the 76ers sign Harden to the max, what's to say he doesn't force his way out of Philly as well? I know some basketball nerds and keyboard fighters are already typing saying, well the Supermax proposed has him in Philly for four years. A player can't be traded if their contract is longer than three seasons. Well yes, you are correct. He can't leave Philly physically, but that doesn't mean he won't leave it mentally. This is again what he did in Houston and Brooklyn. Despite being on contract, he simply checked out, not going to practices and not giving 100%. Even if you could trade him as well, there's a low chance that any team would be willing to pay that large of a sum of money, picking up his contract with again the way he's been performing. Philly would be stuck with him, for better or worse. And a few may ask what would make us think he wants out of Philly. Well for starters, Harden did not sign the original contract draft in February after the trade. Also, the same exact problems are happening in Philly that happened in Brooklyn. Problems with the coach and the role on the team. As I'm sure you've all seen at this point, when Harden was asked if plays are drawn up for him, he replied, next question. James, you said the ball didn't get to you. Does the coach call plays to try to get the ball to you? Next question. Harden moved to Philly for a larger role and is still getting the back burner. It is unlikely that Harden will ever be the first option again because even when Harden was handed the controls, he did not give energy. I mentioned on my podcast that in game six, it seemed Philly simply gave up and were too tired. In games one and two as well, Harden lost to the Heat with an average at best scorecard. James Harden has lost his explosiveness and his pizzazz that we previously were so used to seeing, and his performance has suffered. I'll end this video off by saying it again, although I doubt it'll sting any less hearing it a second time. Harden is aging, and his prime has come to an end. As Embiid said, and it's a shame he probably never will be again. The days of Harden dropping 40 are gone, and now us and Philly have to sit and ask, how much basketball does James Harden still have in him? This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now.